<laughs> Welcome back to uh well, it's Waste and Weekend. Are we blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I can hear Neil giggling in the background because he's not muted. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> we'll start again. <laughs> Welcome back to Wasteland Wednesdays, episode three of Vermin Survival Kit. Uh we are moving on from the, the first scenario to the second. Woo! Vermin 2047 was put out by Studio Agate as kind of a starter set, if you like, written by Julien Blondel. Um, it's beautiful. It's quite crunchy, um, but I mean, the, the setting is so rich. So hopefully you've been enjoying. If you haven't already seen the first two episodes, then please do go back and, and check those out first. Um, although we are starting a new adventure, um, kind of explanations about the, the characters, etc., are all in those earlier episodes. So without further ado, uh, we should probably crack on. So if you're enjoying, please hit like, please subscribe. Um, we're doing a, a little run of these post-apocalyptic post games, and we're having a bunch of fun. So with Devious Dungeons, Paul Burning Forest, and the coolest cats, my name is Phil, and welcome to the Dark Orb. <laughs> Hey, and here we are. Welcome, everyone. How are you doing? Thank you. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I think Washington's going to get that reference. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we, um, as you may have gathered, we've spent about an hour um, talking in, in the green room, because uh, we do have one. It's not very green. Is that where we were? That's where we were, did you oh, not know? Um, about the next bit we're going to do, which is levelling up. So we've already had two sessions in Vermin 2047. It's been amazing so far. Thank you, Neil, for running such an amazing game. It's been good fun. You can respond anytime you want. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. <laughs> it's fun for me too. We don't care about your, what your words are now, all these crazy things. No, um... It has been amazing. I hope you all have enjoyed it so far. Please let us know in the comments. Uh, but I'm going to do, as I always do, bundle up the game and throw it over to Neil. And he's going to... Ah, always, every time. You managed it last week. You did manage it last week. Yeah. I did, actually, didn't I? Yeah, but obviously... Because I was practicing, spent hours practicing. Hours practicing to be yeah. a failed goalie. Right, anyway. Go on. Boo! Yeah. Thanks, Phil. So, uh, we're going to do XP and uh, advancing, as Phil said. Um, just before we do, let's just because we we finished quite nicely, I think the initial scenario last time, um, but we didn't quite sort of wrap up the the end bits, so. Um, we we left with you walking away from the burning barn where you just destroyed the these horrible grubs of whatever it, on earth it was in there. Don't go in um, there, mate. We've destroyed it. So those are those are gone. Um, and the the old boy, the the crazy old guy, he we sort of. We left it deliberately off camera. We're not quite sure what happened to him. Maybe he ran off. Maybe he got burnt in the barn. We don't really know, which is fine, I think. Um, and so that leaves you free, uh, having dealt with the problem at hand, to have a bit of a poke around and explore and see if you can find anything useful in the farm buildings. Uh, so that's what you do. So I'm just going to sort of summarise this bit. We're not going to roll or anything um, because really there's no kind of challenge left. You've got plenty of time now to explore. And there's you've already, already sort of established not really much in the village itself, but this is where the old guy was living in these farm buildings and his, his son, the younger uh, bear-like guy, and so they do have some stuff. Um, there's some, of course, the daily bits and pieces of everyday living, although you really get the feeling that they were um, 
between them, you know, with the old the older guy going a bit maybe demented or just a bit crazy, and the young guy also possibly being a little bit um, <laughs> uncivilized, maybe. Uh, the the place is a chaotic mess. Really, it's pretty dirty. Um, there's some kind of scraps of food and, and sort of bits and pieces. There's some um, dried meat, which you probably like you take one look at it and you feel like you don't really want to risk eating it because it isn't like it's been dried all that well. And a couple of bits are going a little bit moldy. Doesn't look great. Um, but you do find uh, a selection of tools. Uh, of all different kinds, um, which probably uh, 12 would find quite useful. You also find a few, they all seem to be broken, but a few sort of small electronic devices. So there's a couple of mobile phones. Uh, of course, there's no, there hasn't been any uh, mobile signal since the collapse, but um, nevertheless, useful for parts. Um, so there's like an early one of the early iPhones and then a really old like a, you know, not quite a Nokia 3310, but like a really ancient sort of brick phone. Um, so probably uh, Mono might find those useful for parts. Um, you also find some ammo, which Ira will definitely find useful. Um, <laughs> this is where I reveal my complete lack of knowledge about of anything to do with guns i'd love to tell you what color of it was but i don't even i don't i've got no idea so it's of a type suitable for your uh well actually two because uh, you've got a rifle and a handgun haven't you? so you find uh, yeah. ammo for both okay. they're kind um, of bullety aren't they right the kind of bullety kind of bullety they're sort of bullet yeah. shaped about bullet sized <laughs> shell sized as well probably i don't know yeah maybe gun words yeah, insert gun words here. Um, <laughs> so let's say, I mean, I don't know what a magazine would be for, for either, but let's say you like find magazines. Um, half a dozen of each. Okay. And you also find some fuel. So there's some, some barrels in one of the sort of storerooms. Which you immediately you sort of open the top and just obviously by the smell you immediately uh, realise what it is, and that is two of your party objectives, Matt. Mm. Because one of your objectives was find ammo, and another yep. one was find fuel for the generator. Two of our minor so objectives. Yeah. We can so that's two minor group objectives. So we can cross those off, and that earns you party experience dice. Now, you should probably, I mean, you don't have to, but it's always good to have at least a couple of minor objectives for the group. So you still have uh, get to the place on the map that you've identified. That's one of your minor party group objectives. Uh, would you at this point like to suggest another one or two group objectives? And these are minor ones. So, so something that's achievable within maybe like a couple of sessions of play, for instance. We, we didn't really find any hunting equipment by the sound of things, so I'd be quite interested to find out how these, uh, how this father and son have managed to survive. So survival kit, like, well, not, I, not just hunting, like specifically hunting stuff, or no, no, I, I think in terms of like if they don't have any hunting gear, then they must be getting their food from somewhere other than just going hunting because we haven't found any hunting gear. So maybe there's a pocket of society somewhere that we haven't found. Could society, yeah, could, could society be a minor objective? Just society. Yeah, so people, people, just people, group, society. find... Um, so community. Children yeah. for the orphanage. Just, yeah. just children. <laughs> <laughs> You've already got children for the orphanage on the minor level. I hear there's a child farm somewhere around here. <laughs> So locate a local community. Yeah. Yeah. Does that sound good? Or, okay. or food source or something. Yeah. Because long term, so, you yeah. need somebody to supply the children and take the children. So. Sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have an orphanage without supply and demand. 
So <laughs> I think long term, it's going to be business like. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if we're, we're going to make this work, you have to have a, like a twelve step business plan. And I think being oh. within a commutable distance of, of a small community is a good idea. I, I think this video is going to get flagged. You know, hun hunting kiddies, you know, <laughs> supply and demand. <laughs> Uh, well, we're not going to flag this video as uh, aimed at kids. <laughs> no, it it should be. But, yeah. Oh, sorry, GM Neil. We have <laughs> who's, who's remaining very I'm, kind of I'm used to it. This is true. I, I have a I have a, um, a GM not question sure I want now. To go on. That's <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so we've completed two of our minor objectives, but obviously. 12 bullets aren't going to kill a lot of things. No. So does that stay on the list? Oh, it can do. It's up to you. Yeah, so you can keep that as a... Because in terms of weapons, I'm the only one with rifles uh, and hunting stuff. You're so the only one with a rifle. So maybe we should search for more weapons as well. Mono Mono also has a, a pistol, a handgun. Okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And if you, you've got ammo as well. Uh, maybe I don't see where it's recorded. Yeah, but bottom sure right, obviously eight. It should be. It should be. Oh yeah, sheet. I think I've. I think I fired two or three. I think it was three. Personally. Yeah. Kneecap. Kneecap. Yeah, kneecap. Bollocks. Kneecap. And then you finished him yeah, off, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Well done. And then shot him dead. We'll get you with your amazing anatomy uh, knowledge. <laughs> I would class that as <laughs> dissect, maybe. <laughs> The okay, seat. so let's let's keep fine demo. I think that's sensible. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. also, we've got fuel to last for a while, so maybe that would go to like the bottom of the list. So yeah, it could come off the list. Yeah, yeah, because a barrel of fuel should last a while, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's do advancement then. So the way XP works in this game, which I actually really like, is that you're awarded not XP points, as you are in most games, but XP dice. And then you can choose to put your dice towards the various kind of things that you'd expect. So you can improve your traits, you can improve your skills, you can learn new specialities, um, and you can increase your pools. And depending on what you want to do and how good you are already, the difficulty obviously varies. We've been discussing this a little bit, as Phil said beforehand. So I think we've got a good idea, or at least a reasonable idea, of what we want to do. You get dice for the party and you get dice individually. So for the party, you get four dice for completing the initial scenario, but because you also hit two of your minor objectives, that's two dice each. Um, that only makes eight, and I told you it was 10. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I can't do simple maths, or maybe it's three. I tell you what, I told you it's 10, so it's 10. Um, so you've got 10 party dice. And there's one thing this game does that I don't like, and so I hand waved it. Um, what it wants me to do is award the individual dice on the basis mainly of sort of how well you role played. And I've never liked that. I think that's quite an old school thing. You know, a lot of the early games had that. I think it, I, I guess, I know that it's trying to encourage good role playing and that's cool, but you're going to role play to the best of your ability anyway. And I think that sort of thing, like it penalizes someone maybe who's a bit shyer or, do you know what I mean? I just don't, I don't feel like that's a good way of awarding XP personally. Yeah. So, I've just kind of looked at what the range was and set it right in the middle and said, you're going to get exactly in the middle of the, the range. Um, so in that case, it's four, di four dice for completing the scenario plus five dice for the role playing bit. Uh, so nine dice each. So 10 party dice and nine individual dice. So you had some thoughts about what you wanted to do with the party dice, didn't you? What did you decide? Yeah, muted, Phil. Uh, I believe we agreed to try and level up the party for step one. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. For, go from level one to level two. Okay. And my understanding is by doing that, we 
open up some like party like, party skills. Yes. Yeah, there's, so there's various party ability choices as well. Yeah, well, so one of the things party level does is it acts as a sort of a a, a kind of a safety net that the strength of the enemies that you might come across is limited by your party level. So as you increase your party level, you kind of get uh, tougher enemies, but you also get the ability to learn more powerful abilities, party abilities, which is quite cool. So you're, you're obviously party level one at the moment. So to increase to two, uh, the difficulty is equal to the number of party members. So difficulty only three. So that means your target number is just three. And the handicap is equal to the party's current level. So that means handicap one. So that means one extra success. So you need a total of two successes. You only need to get a three for a success. So you have 10 dice to spend. How many do you want to spend? It's a pretty easy roll, but... Won't be too many, right? Well, I think if, if we use three dice, we will get this 90% chance of succeeding. <laughs> oh, 12, good. you're always such a nerd. So I, I feel like I could put in one third of the effort then. <laughs> Hang on, let me get into character. <laughs> there we go. That's better. <laughs> so I feel like this is um, a uh, group effort that we should do. And so I think maybe one third of the effort should be mine. Then you should roll the dice. One, th one third of them. It's see, physically Tim, impossible because we, we have ten. But we, <laughs> we, we have the. Uh, we could also roll four dice and get a ninety-seven percent chance. I, I if think. My um, is correct. I, I think that uh, Ira was not paying attention when you gave statistics earlier about rolling three dice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you got to so, roll the damn dice. Well, yeah, the <laughs> suggestion was that we could all roll one each, you idiot. Well, I, I don't I don't have the party dice. Well, I've already got the three, so we're good. <laughs> you rolled a three? Yes. What did you get, Phil? Uh, well, no. <laughs> also, I rolled a three. Ah, perfect. Don't worry, I can mess this up. <laughs> oh, no, five. Oh. Cool. Perfect. So, so that's a success. So three dice used, seven left, and you are now party level two. Whoop, whoop. So that opens up all the level two abilities. I get the feeling in the main game there's going to be a ton of party abilities. We only have yeah. five to choose from in this starter set, but they're quite interesting. They're quite cool. Um, so I think is that that's what you wanted to do, isn't it? Go for a an ability for the second I arc? think so. I'm trying yeah. to find them. Here we go. So I'm um, referring to the beautiful Book of Doom. Um, so on page 123, there are abilities for the party. We've got a few options. Did we agree that the one we wanted to go for was symbiosis? I think so. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm just rereading it. So when a party member performs an action, every other player may individually spend one dice from their strain pool to grant their companion one additional success on her action uh, per dice spent, regardless of whether the role is successful or not to pry use the ability. So basically, in a nutshell, it's very cool. If one of our friends is not doing very well at the thing that they're trying to achieve, we can pull together and try and help them. It's like a, a better version of, of an assist roll, but without any rolling. It's just painful. Yeah. So to learn a new ability, the difficulty is set per ability. So this will be uh, seven. Mm. And it's got a handicap of two, which is equal to the level of the skill. This is level three two. Successes. So that means you need three successes. So you need a seven or more on three successes. So worth throwing a few dice at this, I reckon. Should, Should we just throw all the rest yeah. in? Yeah. How many you make sure you get uh, do we have left? 
You've got seven, seven left. Six, seven. Seven? We have ten to begin with. Yeah. Yes, that would give us a 58% chance of succeeding. <laughs> but uh, I, I think I can probably, if, if we, I think we, I read that we can all donate a dice of a, from a personal, is that correct? Or I believe no? right, actually, yeah. I from think we're allowed to all right. donate at least one, uh, just, just, a, just one, no more than one dice, I think. Yes, the player may spend one individual dice giving a one dice bonus to a party roll. Does that and come from anything else? So if I... It has to come... So you can you can spend one, up to one each of your individual experience dice. Basically, you can give... Oh, I see, from your own... Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I will drop down from nine to eight individual dice, and we will have eight dice to roll, which will give us a 68% chance of success. Mm-hmm. I'll do the same. Sure, screw it. Yeah. Why not? Seventy-seven percent, eighty-three percent chance. Ten dice. <laughs> okay. This is just off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, um, you know, in 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 pure narrative terms, obviously, I'm going to roll three dice, and I think right. uh, if we all roll three, and then Neil gets to roll one, that seems yeah, fair. Yeah, right. that's right. perfect. I'm going. Oops. Okay, so we need seven. We need seven. three sevens between us. I got a ten. I got a seven. I've got a ten, a six, and a two. So I've got a ten. Nice. Is that three, three. between us? That's three. Yep. Yeah. Cool. What did Neil roll? I got four. Useless. So, so you did need all the <laughs> dice, actually, probably. Then. Yeah. Mm. Neil only rolled a six-sided dice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to say only ten. Oh. <laughs> so great. So you now have the party ability symbiosis, um, which is one of the special totem abilities to match the your party's totem, the symbiote. Cool. So that's the party dice then. So very similar process for individual dice. So you've now you started with nine, so now you've got eight each. Um, who wants to go first? I think I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So okay. I was planning on trying to increase my vigor because it's only at one dice, so I'm going to increase the trait. Oh, okay. So I would like to try and I'm being optimistic here because um, I'm, I'm splitting my dice in two to have an even chance at both things. Okay. So it's difficulty is always nine to increase yeah. the trait. The handicap is equal to the trait's current rating. Which is so one dice. Handicap of one. Yeah. So you need two, two successes. Nines. And nine plus. Yeah. So I'm gonna put four dice into that. Okay. Oh, it's risky. I got a nine and a fifty. No, it's a five. Uh, I only got one. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so well, not this well, time. Well, That's okay. And then the other one I was gonna put into I was I was torn, either putting it into rumors. To kind of know, like, I've read something while I'm here, and we've been sitting here mm. for a while. That's cool. Maybe even something about what we just learned, and all or brawl, as I kind of jumped out of my wheelchair. Hmm. But I think rumors would be more interesting and on brand for my character being specialist is man. So yeah, and the fact that I've only got two, I've only got two skills in man, given it's my yeah, special which is weird. A bit, a bit weird. Yeah. So I'm yeah I'm going to try and improve or learn rumors because I don't have anything in that yet. Well, this on contrast will be very easy then. So Hopefully. the difficulty level for beginner is only five, and be I know, but because it's your favoured domain because it's man, uh, it's actually only three. Nice. Um, and that's the difficulty level. The handicap is equal to the rarity, and it's got no rarity. No so rarity, actually, yeah. you need a three. Yeah. That's it. Oh man, I feel silly rolling four dice, but I don't know what to do. Yes, don't don't gonna... throw. Uh, you've got a ninety six percent chance if you roll two dice. Oh man, go on you then. Save, roll... You can save them. You don't eight, need to spend them. You can save them till next time. Oh, I'll forget. Don't worry. Eighty percent if you roll one dice. I'll roll two. I roll two dice. I can't do this twice, can I? I'd have to improve the next one. No, you can't. No. Uh, so that's a ten. So I, I succeed with my two dice. Okay. And I have two dice left, Good. which. I would like to try and put into brawl then. Okay, cool. Uh, oh no, I so can't. Just... I can't learn a new one, can I? I can only do one of each thing. 
So I can improve a skill, but I can't learn a second skill. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So in that case, I will save them for next time. Yeah. Okay. Because the rest are going to be quite tricky. Yeah. Yeah. And so that success okay. gives me one dice in that skill. Yes. So you've now got yeah. uh, level one, beginner level of rumors. But it never gives you the. Oh, so when you get to advanced, you get the reroll. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Handle. Very good. Okay. Nice. Phil or Johnny? I just have one quick question because mm -hmm. Chris has just said something about um, you can't, if you're going to learn a. Um, can you improve two skills? No. You, you can only basically learn. do each thing once. So you can learn one right. and improve something else. Okay. Or like try and improve a trait and learn one or. Basically, just one one attempt at each thing. I'm with you. Um, okay, I did see something about converting them. To, sorry. Sorry, no, you carry on. I was, I was just asking. I was going to say that the other option was converting them to gear dice, which I know we haven't really dealt with. Um, yeah. So that's another. I didn't know if that was an optional rule, which is why I didn't bring it up earlier. I think. So, yeah, I think let's I not bother with that yeah. for now at least. So I'm, I'll just save them for next time. So I'm just trying to find specialties in here. Oh, you're going to go for specialty, eh? Well, not necessarily, but I was trying to find them. And it's incredibly difficult to do when you're wearing sunglasses <laughs> indoors. <laughs> um, well, there's, there's something you also can do. Also, it helps you can read, that. which, of course, I'm finding a challenge. Um, but certainly what I'm thinking of doing, at the very least, is taking environment, which I don't have at the moment. Okay. Um, so I've got zero pips in that so far. Okay, so it's not your specialised domain, it which makes it difficulty five, and it's rare one, so that means you need one extra success, so you'd need two successes at difficulty five. So I think I'm going to roll five dice on this. And just barely a success. I rolled a mm. five and a six. Okay, Two nice. ones and a four. Ooh. So, get to fill in that dot there. An environment, okay. among other things, um, basically, uh, mono, you may recall from, the, um, from an earlier episode, I think it was the first one, actually, uh, noticed that the weather was beginning to turn when he was driving the van. So... Basically, I think he's kind of going down a path of, of paying even more attention to, to nature and meteorology and, and that sort of thing. Um, I was toying with also doing something in the specialties realm, but I think that's quite hard. Yeah, it is. I've got four dice left. So I might go to look to improve something. Actually, you've got three dice left. Three dice. There's three? Because you gave one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, good point. Good point. Yeah. So with that in mind, I can't I can't take a new skill. So no. I'm going to try and improve something that's got one dot in it. And I think I'll go for something that isn't particularly rare. So good idea. I write thinking that because it's got some the things that have got stars on them on the character sheet are, are rarer. Is that right or not? Uh, the rarity so, is the one or two dots in the grey middle. Yeah, absolutely. Section. So yeah. firearms is quite rare. So yeah. I'll avoid that. And maybe I'm quite vigilant already and I get a, a bonus on vigilance. So I might increase vigilance further if I can. Okay. Sorry. So to take vigilance or to take any skill to advanced is difficulty seven. Mm hmm and as you say there's no rarity so there's no handicap so you just need a a single success at seven which with a nine i got yay so that's your second one so that is a re-roll then yes that second one just trying to work out how to right. indicate that on this character sheet it's a um, like a cross in the circle yeah. Okay. That was something like a cross in the dark. But there you go. <laughs> right. Johnny, have you decided? 
Yes. Uh, I'd have a little rethink on, uh, after, after realizing I can't try and improve to, um, yeah, I had the same problem. because, because, because with, with that loss of the, uh, one individual dice, I think it'd be a bit iffy. Um, so I was going to, um, I really felt the heat when I was fighting that big guy and he was, you know, I, I just had some very, very lucky rolls. I had some shocking rolls at the beginning of last session and at the end, luckily they were high because I really felt like I was going to get absolutely hammered. Um, and being like the, the character that is going to protect everyone will be the one that jumps in front of everyone and stuff like that. I feel like I should probably increase my close combat if I can. Um, that which sounds my, pretty it's not, my fav, it's not my favorite domain. Um, so I'm just going to check I've read this right. So um, I'm looking to get a uh, an expert level, mm -hmm. uh, advanced from advanced. So I need to hit a nine. Correct. And uh, there's no handicap. So it should Correct. just be uh, one success. Is that right? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. OK. Um, right, I'm going to roll six dice, which should hopefully give me a 34% chance. OK. Um, yeah, I got a nine there. You got it? Um, yeah, I did. I was, I was worried because I was reading it upside down. I was thinking I haven't got it, but I've, yeah. Yeah, it is a nine. Um, not a Sorry, I'm fixed. So then yeah. on your sheet, if you if you fill in the second circle then. Yep. And then the third circle now you gain and that becomes a cross. So that means two extra dice and a reroll, which is expert level. That's Lovely, pretty cool. Thank you. That's, I, I think that will keep me hopefully alive a little longer than uh, than I, I would have lasted before. Um, with, I've got, I think I've got two, ex, two other dice left and I'm just going to let them um, keep going. Them. Yeah, just save them because um, I'm, I'm not sure what I'd do with them. Yeah, two is not much, is it? It's it's not it, quite enough. Is it? Yeah. No. No. Perfect. Okay, so unless there is anything that you want to do in this village, uh, we'll, we'll say now that you know you've given it a kind of a, a thorough explore. Um, and of course, you've you know you've rested and and sort of healed up to this your ability. Um, unless there's anything else you want to do, you were you were originally on your way to the the place you'd identified on the map, weren't you? Which is the potential um, um, orphanage. That's the word. Um, so I guess you're gonna get back on the road, get back in the van, yeah, head off in that direction. Seems logical. Yep. Would 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 we say that our uh, strain, our, our um, nerve and strain pools have been replenished? Yes. We've sort of perhaps had a rest after. Yeah, and um, I think we can also say because although you were a little bit wounded, you weren't very heavily wounded. Um, you didn't take any lethal wounds, so I think we can probably say that you spend a little while, maybe a few days, even just. And you know, it's up to you. It could be in the village, or it could be just outside the village, or whatever. But um, just basically resting, recovering. And, yeah. and so we'll say that you start with no wounds and full nerve and strain pools. Cool. Okay. Oh, and full uh, party pool as well. Hooray! I actually paid off my wounds before the fight. Because that <laughs> minus minus one dice on all oh, the rolls didn't you? Yeah, right. was huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did that yeah, as really well. Big. Made a lot of difference. So you set off in the van, heading once again east, feeling a little bit better, maybe feeling a bit, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit conflicted about what you found at the village. Um, what, what do you think you're all feeling and thinking about what transpired in the village. Do you think uh, those bones in that, that barn were people from the town, the other, that, that, that village? And they, they got everybody from that, that village? They're too fresh, I think. They were, they, I think this town, I mean, you, you saw, we, we looked for tracks when we arrived. We saw no signs of life. I think maybe 
people were just coming here looking for a safe haven. And these, I don't know, monsters, they, they just would attack them and kill them. And I, I don't know why they are feeding them to that larva, though. Uh, maybe it's, I, I don't know, some food source for them or something, or the larva give them some benefit, or... I, I can't understand that part myself. But, uh, you know, we've we found, you know, stuff from different places, not that you, you know, from just a, a village, you know, some of these tools that we found, they don't belong in this village. But, you know, they must have come from outside. But why these monsters kill them? I, I, I don't understand it. That's, that's what keeps me up at night. I think my, uh, my concern is that um, the old man, he uh, seemed to think it was okay, you know, and um, it's not. But uh, on, on the, the plus side, now there is no one in the village, and uh, I can go back to Zerth, which is good. And look, pretty fire. I'm surprised it's still burning. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big barn. <laughs> Unless those lava had some kind of like flammable. Instead, we didn't. We didn't test that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so it's traveling in the van heading east the road of course is uh, is pretty overgrown and there's some uh, old abandoned cars that you have to sort of work your way around but you make reasonably good time and you're about a day out a day's travel out when it's getting probably like mid-afternoon when you turn a corner and you see a quad bike that's been pulled just off the side of the road um and there's a figure looks like a as far as you can tell maybe a youngish man um slumped over it not moving maybe dead maybe unconscious maybe asleep but certainly not moving Yeah, I had a new wheels for you. I wouldn't stay on that thing. Plus, this is comfy now. I've been sat in it for a while. <laughs> yeah, we can smell that from here. It's not that bad. Come on. <laughs> You're just used to it. Um, well, if, you let, if you let us get out every once in a while, I might not have to, you know... Uh, <laughs> Look, stop stop so, the van. Uh, I'm just going to pop my head up. Swing the door open for a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I pull the, the van to a stop. Um, maybe slightly behind this person so that, you know, if they actually want to kind of come up and lift a gun up, we're in the wrong direction kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lean out the door. I'm going to shout, uh, hey, you! Are you dead? <laughs> <laughs> no reply. You guys, you guys got anything to throw? I have my sledgehammer. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa, I got this new bow and arrow. Hold on. And I'm going to get this bow and arrow out. <laughs> that, we, <laughs> that we picked up from the last place. And it's the first time using it, I'm just going to go and have a go. How far, how far <laughs> just wait till we stop? But, I think it probably would have been about... 10 to 15 feet. Perfect. Not too much of a challenge. Yeah, but near enough that you could shout at him far enough away that he couldn't just, you know, they couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull back an arrow and, and let one loose. And then release the arrow. <laughs> and release the arrow, yeah. Uh, so aiming for the figure? Yeah, it won't, stick to, it won't stick to the uh, quad bike, so... I'll aim for the guy. Okay, Wait, whereabouts? Uh, in his. He's spine. trying to kill them. Okay. Uh, it's already dead. Might be asleep. 
But yeah, aim for their spine. You've got yeah. a vendetta against walkers. Yeah. <laughs> Can aim for the lower back. So I think I, you're you're close enough, and there's there's no real um, difficulty to the shot. So that I think I I don't need to ask you to Maybe roll the bow before. You just yeah, could be comedy. Um, <laughs> yeah, which way runs it go? <laughs> um, and and you are after all uh, a, a bit of an expert marksman, albeit normally with a rifle, but yeah, not with ranged weapons. Yeah. yeah. Oh oh yeah, no, it's a different skill actually, isn't it? That's yeah. right. Oh yeah, that's true. You're actually not that good at it. <laughs> but in any case, um yeah, the it hits him and there's no there's no response at all. He's he's clearly dead. Well, I I, I think he's dead, guys. Uh do you, want, do you mind just pulling up next to him? I can get that arrow back. Sure. And I move the the van much nearer and get out. And uh, yeah, go okay, close and have a look. Okay, so um, once you get nearer, you notice two things straight away. The quad bike has been shot up pretty badly. There's quite a lot of bullet holes in it. Rubbish. Um, you can see that at least one has gone through the fuel tank. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you get closer, you can both smell and see the little, you know, where it's kind of soaked into the ground. And the second thing is the guy is is quite obviously dead. And um, there's quite a number of um, kind of rips to his clothes. It's, so it is a, it's a guy, it's a youngish guy, he's probably in his, you're going to say maybe early to mid 30s. Looks like um, like he would have been reasonably kind of fit. Um, but obviously, uh, something's happened to him. Uh, let's get a let's get a roll. Um, how about knowledge plus? I'm not used to these skills yet. I'm gonna say I don't know what would it be. Heal. So this is like a kind of a diagnostic role, basically. So knowledge plus heal for whoever wants to do it. Uh, and actually, it's going to be the same for all of you. I only have two dice. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've all only got two dice. It's only going to be difficulty five, but heal is one of the specialist skills. So you're going to yeah. need two successes. So you need two fives. I don't mind rolling. So I got out first. Okay. Uh, I did not succeed. Okay. I got one success. Um, I will add a strain die to then roll again. Is that how it works? Yep, exactly. Yep. Roll, basically, to roll an additional die. Yep. yep. Well, that was less. <laughs> you can keep adding them if you want to. If you want to spend another strain, you can do it dice by dice. No, I think I'm just going to go. I think this guy is quite dead. <laughs> so Arrow? Can we, can we see where the are all the bullet holes on the same side of the vehicle? They or are. are they peppered? Yeah, they're all on the same side. Mm. Are they Which on the same side of the vehicle from? as we are? Yeah. Yes, roadside. Road side. Yeah. And then if we turn around, can we see where they would have come from? The road. Um. Well, it might be like a house in the field or something. Like that. Yeah. No, there's not. Um, That's so the he's, post just there. You've kind of got. It's not exactly forest, but there's kind of stands of trees sort of dotted around, like sort of fields and trees, kind of scrubland mm. sort of. Um, there's no other buildings, or for that matter, other roads. Okay. So presumably either someone well, it had to have been either someone on the road or someone yeah. in the field opposite. Yeah. Um, he's there's quite a lot of blood. Um, so, uh, so the role was to see if you can work out maybe how recently he died or, or exactly what he died of, but you're not sure. Uh, maybe the blood kind of just makes a mess of things. None of you are really um, experts in in that kind of area. Uh, certainly, he's it, you know he's not warm. This is not a very very recent death, but equally, it doesn't look like it was weeks and weeks ago either. So, sort of somewhere in that that time scale. Um, 
Can we search his pockets? Well, can somebody search his pockets? You can, of course. Um, so you find a few things. Um, most interestingly, well, three things. There's a map of the area. Now, Ira's already got a, a map of this area, but this has been annotated by hand. Um, one particular um, settlement, I guess, looks like maybe small town, large village, uh, slightly off of the sort of beaten track where you were going to go, uh, but not much, has been circled. And then just to the north of that, there's an area of woods, and that's also been circled in red with a, a red exclamation mark in the middle. And then there's a couple of other little kind of notes, all things around this circled town or village. Um, so things like there's a, a, a note that says clean water. And there's another note that says um, hornets, question mark. And then the second thing you find is blueprints of what looks like Actually, let's get a roll <laughs> before I tell you. Um, let's go for it's going to be knowledge again, but this one's going to be. Um, <laughs> this is going to be even more difficult roll, I'm afraid. Uh, it's going to be knowledge plus civilization. Oh, I'm okay with that. Oh, well, this is Iris for sure. Yeah, I get three uh, dice. And again, difficulty five. And you get a reroll as well. Difficulty right. five, but it's a two dot thing. So it's. I yeah, but that it. doesn't apply. That doesn't apply. Oh, because it's my specialist. You've got thing. the skill. Yeah. No, just because you've got the skill. That only applies if you don't oh, have yeah. any Sorry. miracles. Yeah. I'm looking at everything. Um, okay, so I'm going to just go try my three dice then. Yeah, so three Ooh. dice and then a reroll. No, two I'm, I'm going to. No, one five. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Ciao. Uh, an eight and a five, so two successes. Nice. So these look like blueprints of an electric plant. Okay. Does it have a name on it? Would it would, would we be able to see it on the map to say it's this bit on the um, map? Uh, it doesn't have a name, but let's say with the extra success, uh, you you manage to kind of make out not only the blueprint of the plant itself, but also the sort of where the connections go and kind of mm. head to and from the plant and then sort of compare that with the map. And you realise that there's a, just something little marked on the map, uh, just maybe like a couple of miles outside this small town. Uh, and you sort of piece together that that must be where the plant is. Sure. And is that... Looking at the annotated map now, now we know where it is. Is that a, surrounded by any kind of danger, like marked in? I'm going to presume the red is for danger. Yeah, uh, that... no. Okay. So but is the area being annotated at all? So uh, maybe it's not the been area there. of the plant hasn't. No. Okay, so maybe it's not been there yet. Well, if I've got if I've got time, I, I wouldn't mind copying over some of this information onto my map. No, search his pockets. Did he have a red pen? That's kind of handy. <laughs> He's got a red and a blue pen. Oh, damn, it's a good day. A jackpot. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take everything he's written down. Just give bear with me a few minutes and I'm just gonna copy it onto my map. You boys play with yourself. Oh, sorry. You 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 play with yourself. No, not literally. Not again. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start writing all these things down. Come up with a plan or something. He's he's also got um he's got a he's got some ammo, but curiously no gun. He doesn't seem to have a gun, but you do find um in a like a sort of he's wearing like a combat trousers in like the side pocket, um uh, another six handgun ammo. Which either either one of you can take, or yeah, do you want to take? Yeah, do you want to take this lot, Mono? I took the last lot. And finally, 
a walkie-talkie. Now, the walkie-talkie looks... Well, two things. First of all, uh, it's a bit old and knackered. It's literally held together by electrical tape. Um, and on... So it's this kind of blue electrical tape that's been wrapped around it, and someone's written on it in just in kind of rough, like in biro, uh, Paul, the name Paul. Uh, not only that, it looks like it maybe got bashed or possibly even took a, a glancing hit from a bullet or something um, because it's part of the side is kind of caved in and there's some sort of wires poking out. Um, it's not okay. in the best condition ever. So I'm going to try turning that on. Okay. And see if anything happens. Just try and turning on, see if there's any static or anything like that. Nothing. Okay. Um, we can probably fix this. Um, I think 12 between you and I, at least, we can maybe make something of it. I I, I would try, but uh, I think this is definitely your area. I think you're a far, far greater at me. You know, you give me vehicles, machines, engens, especially. I'm it's just a small and, uh, engine. You're used <laughs> to small things. I, I, I would be happy to help, absolutely. But uh, yes, I, I think you will mm -hmm. take the lead on this one. So you're going to try um, and pick it up? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll have, a, I'll have a, a quick look at it now, I think. If you need to borrow any of my tools, feel free. Everything is here. I have so many different screwdrivers, soldering irons. Do you have Everything something you... very, very small? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Do you need it for a screw? Yes. I'm just going to go <laughs> Russian now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> problem is... My, uh... I had one of these accents up all the time. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. So, um, Mono goes back to the back of the van and kind of to the uh, little workbench area, pulls the lighting down and, and starts taking a look and maybe gets a, like a multimeter out and starts, you mm -hmm. know, doing that stuff. Yeah. Just try and work out what's wrong. Yeah. So, I think you, you, I think you probably diagnose being very much the expert in technological things you you diagnose what's wrong pretty quickly and it looks like it should be repairable a bit, a bit of a bodge but at least mm -hmm. you know to get it halfway working with any luck yep. um yep. so this is going to be what should be quite an easy role for you it's going to be accuracy plus technology which is both of which are your strong suits yep. uh, difficulty is going to be seven so five dice but no handicap so yeah, five dice and a reroll, and all you need is a seven. So it should be pretty cut and dry. I got two tens and a seven. Hey, easy. I'm gonna reroll that too. <laughs> yeah, go on. And an eight. There we go. So um, with all those successes, you you fix it up quite well. Um, although you you think probably. You've got it to a point where it will receive, but you don't think it will transmit because mm -hmm. the uh, the mic is just bust and you don't have a spare. Um, but nice. yeah, yeah, you can try it on. It kind of has power. Um, it the battery obviously has some had some juice in, so you get a bit of static. Um, yeah. It's not currently picking up, you know, obviously a, any kind of signal, but. Um, it seems to be working at least now to receive. Okay. And, and with four successes, you, you, I think you do that in probably like thirty seconds. <laughs> it's like duh, 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 done. Yeah. Um, hey friends, so I, I think I know the the problem is solved now. Um, I've taken a note of the frequency. You you not you don't know this, but um, you need to know the frequency for a, for a walkie. Um, I'm going to scan through and see if I can find anything. So I start basically going through all the frequency bands, trying to see if I can pick up anything. Um, with my intention that if I can't find anything, then I'm just going to go back to what it was previously set at. Makes sense. Um, yeah, you you do that. You don't hear anything at all. It's just okay. static. Okay, so I set it back as it was. Um, and... Might leave it on. 
Okay. So it's like turn the volume down so it's not annoying. Well, not too annoying. Um, but but just leave it on in case. Just see if anything. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, while uh, Mono's doing this, um, I think I'd probably take a quick look at the quad bike mm. um, and just see if uh, if we can siphon off any fuel that it might have into our tank um, or if there's any sort of perhaps usable spare parts, gears, I don't know, brake pads and anything that mm. I might think, you know, e even if it's like the uh, the wheels, I can upgrade Ira's wheels or something. To give him a bit yeah. more sort of cross country maneuverability or something, yeah. anything like that, suspension, um, and I'll salvage that if possible. Well, there's definitely no fuel because that's all leaked out uh, and and soaked away, unfortunately. But there probably are some some salvageable spare parts. Let's uh, let's have a roll to see how how well you do in locating yeah. and, and salvaging. So this will be. Uh, accuracy again and this is going to be accuracy plus mechanics which should be pretty good for you pretty pretty uh, so you're expert in mechanics so that gives you two dice and a reroll plus your two dice accuracy so four dice plus a reroll and difficulty seven so you just need a seven uh, two of two fours and a nine if okay. I get a, a if, can I re-roll one of the lower ones to get like a double success? If if I can. Yep. Uh, that's an eight. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so you you find a few bits. Um, I think let's say I don't think there's any need to specify what they are, but you could just put on your character sheet um, mechanical spares or some you know something like that, quad bike spares, and yeah. uh, when you next have need of some. We're also good at these kind of hyper masculine uh, <laughs> yeah. car things, gun things. Car, car <laughs> things and gun things, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You now have a selection of car things. <laughs> Quad bike things, I suppose, technically. Yeah. This 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 box of things you've got here, uh twelve, uh those seem perfect for things I've been looking for. Uh I've been after some new wheelchair parts. Maybe they count towards yep. my minor objective for my personal objectives. Ah, yeah, is that one of your personal? Ah, okay. Yes, sir. Cool. Very good. Do we refresh dice pool when? Uh, is it like that? You get like refresh on the nerve and strain pools when you get an objective. Is yeah, that's objective? true. Actually, so um, if Ira has any uh, pools, pool dice spent, they refresh fully. I will give them to you later, Ira. <laughs> you, look, you, look, you look quite relaxed now. Come to well, me I guess I'm, I'm, I'm kind of busy with this map anyway. <laughs> Very good. And this is where uh, 12's objectives are to withhold important things from friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, but actually, I think with uh, with these finds, a bit of ammo, some some spare parts, and 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 a useful map. Um, I think that's probably that would be enough to certainly refresh your party pool. Although I don't think you've spent any, have you? No, it's full. No. Okay. Um, and also, I think if uh, have any of you down nerve? Mono is, isn't he? Oh no, it's strain, wasn't it? No one spent any nerve. Oh well, <laughs> I was going to give you some nerve back, but <laughs> no matter. Oh, the nerve. Um, okay. Anything else? Or on your way? Well, did you two come up with a plan yet? And we're going to follow just... the exclamation mark and the circle and the other red stuff what? on the... Why would we go straight to the danger zone? Yeah. It's a great song. But I'm still not going to go there. Okay. Surely there's a safer way we can get there. Well, so you can, get, van. you can get... If you wanted to go to the town that's marked on the map... Yeah then you can. It's a small detour from where you were headed, but one of your party goals is find civilization. And you can get there without going to the through the exclamation mark. But are you not also intrigued about these blueprints? Sure. Would 
Well, would that's, we a know... se- that's a separate place, right? We got the the circle town. We got our destination for our orphanage of lost children, and we've got a minor objective. These these blueprints that I don't know. Should we just sell them to somebody? I'll we'll I'm, I'm, sure be, blueprints. I'm sure there'll be a shopkeeper somewhere that buys blueprints. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure the blueprint shop is in the next town over. <laughs> I mean, I, th- I think one of my ma- my objectives was to get uh, blueprints for things that might help the orphanage. So maybe we will trade later, you know. I give you some spare parts, you give me some blueprints. <laughs> Not trying to meta game here, but... <laughs> um, well, how, how about we go check out the town from a distance? We could do we that. We get a vantage point. I mean, if we can find the nearest contours are on this map, we can find a high point, maybe with a, yeah. like a vantage point. Yeah, and then from here we can uh, use the drone. Sure. Use the drone, I can use my scope. 12 can just 12 run can it watch. in. <laughs> Very badly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You can I make a scope card sleeping. out of those parts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like right down the hill. <laughs> okay, uh, sounds yeah. like a plan. Okay, so we're going to so drive towards, towards the... Yeah, yeah. okay. One last thing. Did the guy have a helmet? No. No. Well, that's a violation. <laughs> I think we should report him. Yeah. yeah. But he didn't pass his um, Three like, points original license. license or anything. Yeah. No. I hope there was number plates on the quad bike. It was L on plate. the road. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. this quad bike, was it a 125? Could he do it on an L plate? Or... Hold on, we'll go do some research, come back. (laughs) Has he got a driver's license in his wallet? (laughs) (laughs) Blockbuster card. (laughs) Um, All right, so you you head off in the van. um, You carry on down the road in the direction you're going, but then you take the, the turning that will take you towards this place that's marked on the map, on the new map. And once you get something like a probably a couple of miles away, um, because Phil, you said, uh, or Mono, that uh, you're going to leave the the walkie on, uh, a couple of miles out, suddenly you get a, a crackle of static, and then it, it's not the best signal, but it, it's clear enough to make out. It's a woman's voice, and she says says paul paul can you read me (sighs) paul this is liar please come in paul and then you hear her just sort of as if she's turned to the side still no answer okay listen look we're we're looking for you i don't know if you can hear this i'm gonna keep trying you if if you can hear this and and for some reason you can't reply just just know that we're we're on our way we're we're looking for you. We'll we won't give up. Okay, I'll I'll try you again. And then another crackle of static. Hey, hey Mano, I know that the microphone doesn't work in that, but do you not have parts from the telephones you could put to use for this? Can you not hook up so, the receiver from the telephone? Um. So I think at that point I'll kind of pull over and I'll say um, I don't really care about this but um, if you think we should, I mean you you are our leader um, I can have a look um, if uh, 12, you want to drive yes, absolutely, no problem well, okay okay, yeah, yeah so, you, you don't um, want to you don't want to go gunning like, towards them like, they won't know who you are You'll have this guy's radio. It's better to give him some form of communication. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I mean, if you think this is best, but I'm going to tell you now, I'm not going to talk to them. Well, I'll, I'll do the Meta gaming. I've got one D of empathy and nothing in anything even vaguely related to that. So, um, yeah. Basically, Mono doesn't really care about people things, but respects Ira's kind of opinion and recognizes that Ira has a social conscience that, that Mono doesn't have. So it just didn't ever occur to Mono that 
you know, there might be some kind of appealing to humanity thing going on here. <laughs> um, okay, fine. If you think it's important, I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a look. They may have kids for the orphanage. <laughs> true, true. Don't know unless you ask. You get working. It's not something you go canvassing for, generally, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, the past, okay, the past okay. civilization didn't do it right. We've got to try something different for the next civilization. Yeah. So I'll head back to, to the bench, and um, yeah, there's like a, it was like a cell phone wasn't there. So yeah. um, I didn't even think of it at, at the time because I was kind of more interested in, in hearing if there was any kind of transmission and, and probably, uh, yeah, the moment... Ira says, hey, don't we have some spare parts to actually finish the job? I kind of go, hey, yeah, maybe. The, the other way, you could maybe like rig it to do some Morse code. Sure. Sometimes you know Morse code? These, these things I've seen in the movies, they used to have things where you could do the Morse code on the receiver. Mm -hmm. So not but, have that? Um, do you know it? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir, I do. I can do SOS at least. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's so, not one of um, my skills. I'll, I'll be honest. I'd like to go back and and see if I can, like, um, fit the microphone from one of the mobile phones to the uh, walkie. Okay, so attempting to fix the the walkie. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be the exact same role as before, Phil. It's going to be an accuracy plus technology. So I've got three in accuracy. Uh, Two in technology, and um, it's a favourite domain, which I've forgotten. Um, won't apply in this case, because I'm going to set it at difficulty seven. So if it was a difficulty five task, you'd pass automatically. Hmm. But do That's I get to roll next to die, because it's favourite jobby? Uh, no. I remember. No, okay, no. cool. But still five dice. But oh, still. Boing. Um, a seven, a seven, a five, a six, and a four. Fine. I'm going to re-roll that four. <laughs> Roll two. Damn. Okay. Still good. And, well, better than good enough. Two successes. Um, I'm going to fix it. So, yeah, you, you prize open one of the phones, find the bits you need, quick bit of soldering, bit of fiddling around, and you have yourself... I mean, it's not, uh, you know, it's not good as new. There's a bit of kind of hiss and crackle, but you now have yourself a functioning two-way walkie-talkie. I don't even know. Oh, this is complete sidebar. This is a real world thing. I don't even know where one would buy a walkie-talkie anymore. I guess Amazon or something. Yeah, uh, back in the day, when you have Radio Shack or Tandy or, or whatnot, and they're long gone. Argos catalog. That's a good question. Argos, Argos, yeah, Argos, yeah. I'm not Argos entirely convinced one. that that would be an amazing walkie-talkie. But I mean, is, is Argos still around in the apocalypse? I imagine it would be. <laughs> I'll be there, there forever. I mean, that yeah. laminated book of dreams is just going to <laughs> yeah. survive any kind of... Yeah. Next time we need something, finally I'll got a look. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> no need for searching all these houses. Yeah. <laughs> Argos ever has everything. So I've got my um my Argos. Um they, they own like um Bush and Alba now. So yeah, it's it's, okay. an, it's a Bush walkie talkie. There you go. That's that's gonna make a lot of people laugh. Yeah. Wouldn't know why. Um turn it on, feels like it's working. I turn it off. Um and then I chuck it at Ira, kind of gently. <laughs> <laughs> Underarm. I'll, I'll attempt to catch it. Um... <laughs> yeah, I didn't throw it at 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've crashed the van. Now we're all yeah. the device. Okay, uh, uh, 12. Slow down a little bit so I can concentrate. Uh and I'm gonna I'm gonna press the button down. Mm -hmm. Turn it on first. I'll turn it on. Press the button down. And uh, uh hello. Can you can you hear me? There's a there's a little bit of a pause. I I just go over. Say over. Why would I say over? <laughs> you say that when you finish your sentence. I saw it on um uh, a thing once, a magazine. I'm going to press it in and go, go over. <laughs> um, there's a little bit of a pause, and then the same voice that you heard earlier comes on. Uh, 
and she says, she says, Paul, Paul, is that is that you? Paul, is that you? I'm going to press it down. Do, do I really sound that bad? <laughs> Last time I checked my name, one Paul, it's Ira. Who, who am I talking to? And Over. Another... Over. Over. <laughs> 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 There's another little pause, and then wait. Were they finished? They didn't say over. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, why am I saying it? Oh, never mind. Who, who, who is this? It, are you, are you with Paul? Oh, we've we found. Hold on. We found Paul by the side of the road. Uh, about maybe. How far were we? About two two miles. Um, outside of whatever town we're in, uh, if that, if that, I mean, if that is Paul, this, this, what, did he, what was he wearing? He, did he, was he wearing scraggy clothes? Was he full of bullet holes? Quad bike, quad bike. Oh yeah, he had a quad bike too. Yeah, he had, a, uh, he had a bright red quad bike with uh, flames on it, tassels, <laughs> on a few tassels, <laughs> stabilizers, <laughs> and some. <Yeah. laughs> And some fairy dice. <laughs> Not very good at doing this building uh, tension thing today. Uh, yeah. Actually, no, no, no. Think about it. He had those little dangly bollocks that hang on the the rear of the car. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that does that sound like Paul? <laughs> Over. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! So this is this is Ira, the um, expert negotiator. I, I, I'm <laughs> sensing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, could, I, I should I have spoken in in French or something? <laughs> I know foreign languages as well. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would help. No, I think yeah, um, negotiation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, so she she gives you a, a little description. Um, I won't, you know, role play it all, but she kind of tells you like, height, I think we nailed it, hair color, and and so on. Um, and it it matches the guy that you that you found. Um, and yeah, and so, so she, she describes him. And she says, "Is is that that's 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 who you found? He's he didn't." I guess he didn't make it. Uh, no, no, uh, this lady, right? Yeah, this is the lady we talking. Yeah, uh, no, ma'am. Uh, th- this, this was. Uh, like we can't, we couldn't tell how long he'd been dead, but it'd been a been a short while. Um, his 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 uh, vehicle had bullet holes in it. The fuel drained out. It looked like it'd been quite quite a mishap. Uh, but he did have. Uh, this this map just and uh, some blueprints. Oh, and a red and blue pen. <laughs> you hear from from the sort of background um, a man's voice saying, "Fucking raiders." And then she says, um, "Over." <laughs> <laughs> You had to wait until I was drinking, didn't you? <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> oh dear. She says, "Well, I, I'd appreciate if you could. Uh... Well, where, whereabouts are you? You must be. You must be nearby. These walkies don't have a very good range." Oh, it came on about. Uh, I don't know about 500 yards ago. Um, looking at the map, we're heading into this town. He circled with a an exclamation mark. Okay, yeah, that's that's us. I tell you what, we're we're just outside. Can we maybe meet you on the road? I'd uh, appreciate sure, you. Uh, you you, you may be able to see our truck coming closer. Twelve, twelve. Carry on driving. She said, I'd, I'd, appreciate, "I'd appreciate if you could show us on the map where you found him. We'd like to go and, you know, retrieve the body." Oh, for and... sure, yeah, for sure. You can have his map back, and we'll I'll mark his map. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's let, let's go twelve. Yeah. Wait, where are they? Where are you? Over. She says, just just head towards the town. You're coming from the. You must be coming from the south, right? You are. Yes. Oh, <laughs> over. <laughs> this mysterious voice tells us this is so. Yeah. <laughs> Shaking your magic eight ball. Um. <laughs> She says, "Okay, cool. Uh, that's fine. Just just carry on on that road, and we'll we're probably just about a, I guess maybe a mile off or so from where you are. Um, we'll just we'll just see. We'll just wait on the road for you. Okay. Uh, maybe don't stay on the road. Twelve's not got the best eyesight. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Twelve. <laughs> so, are you are you just making straight?" for them or or something else if you guys are happy to do that yeah i'd, I'd sit back and let you i go. think yeah we'll make a, an effort to make sure that our firearms are in working order and, and loaded and all that sort of mm -hmm. gun stuff gun stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then uh yeah as far as i'm concerned so i know what we, what we could do is we could send the drone out whilst we're driving but I don't think the drone will be able to keep up. Do so you really not. think they're going to be that dangerous? Well, no. But um, I don't think my drone can go as fast as the um, as the van. So, well, we we can't go too fast. I don't want to go hurtling around a corner and run them over. <laughs> I think that we should exercise caution. I think these people, they're probably on the level. If we are respectful to them, they'll probably probably be respectful to us. Exactly. Well, When's the last I, time you had a good meal? If they've got they've got people, they must have people that are cooking and some actual food for a change. That that being said, the, apparently there are raiders in the area. And so maybe we should be cautious and be looking out for them. If they've taken out one of them, their people, maybe they're stalking the others. I, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, I do like the, the idea of the drone getting an aerial view, making sure that we are uh, alone when we encounter this group and uh, hmm. aren't being watched or... Well, ambushed. we're not we're not far away. Why don't we slow down, set the drone off? I can keep an eye on the horizon from here. And then okay. we'll just see what's where we're going. Okay. Well, maybe we Six can people. stop for a little while and, uh, and do this. If the car goes, if the van goes slow enough, we should be all right. Sure. In, in, in my yeah. head, we, we, if we, we stop for far, a second, we'll get the drone in the air, and then we'll just slowly just keep up with the drone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then yeah. what's the benefit of having a drone? From above. Mm. I I feel like if we're going to meet on a road, in my head, there's a lot of overgrown mm. hedges, fields. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Next to it, and it probably I has. I can't them. remember if it's got like um, like a heat camera or anything like that. Um, I don't think it's got heat. Anything. It's got a good, just, you know, visual camera. Uh, two microphones, panoramic yeah. cameras. Mic as well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, so I think... I, actually, I think, Chris, you nailed it in terms of, like, range and stuff. So we could take it up and actually see mm. further away. Um, and yeah, Just to make sure we're not going around the corner into, like, a compound yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what, basically, I'll control the drone, but Ira, you can... Um, I'll uh, drive the drone, but I, uh, Ira, you'll need to uh, move around on the cameras because I can't do both. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. So it's okay. like a three-person operation. 12 is driving the van relatively slow, but you know, so that the drone can kind of keep up or maybe be slightly ahead. I'm just making sure that the drone is going in the right direction and following the road. Yep. Meanwhile, Ira is going to be actually watching the cameras to see if, if she can spot anything. Okay, cool. So let's get a roll for the drone. So that's accuracy plus steer plus a bonus dice for your drone speciality. Okay. Um, difficulty is going to be 
It's not vastly difficult, so we'll say seven. But I'm going to give you a handicap of one because of all the trees. That is absolutely fine because I got a nine, an eight, and a seven. Perfect. Ooh. And three ones. Oh no, two sevens and, and two ones. My apologies. So, yeah, that's cool. Four successes. Okay. And I think um, as I was just literally looking at a screen, I don't think that needs a roll really. Well, actually, I'm I'm going to undermine you there because okay, it, actually, it actually says here oh. um, two panoramic cameras. Um, sound and image quality is far from optimal because it's rendered on a really scratched screen of a remote control. Ah, okay. So, I mean, theoretically, there's one remote control, but I think, you know, maybe realistically, that's kind of, that doesn't really work. Maybe it's like a switch and the controls come off. Yes. Yeah, let's go for that. <laughs> yeah. All right, sure. Well, it is, um, although it's sort of bodged together, some of the, some of the parts are military grade, I remember mm. reading about it. So, um, so it is reasonably good. Um, all right, well, go on then. Just for fun, then, let's yeah. have a perception mm -hmm. plus... Uh, I mean, it's not really the screen, is it? It's more the vigilance on the screen. So I think it's going to be environment. Okay. So I don't have anything in environment. Okay. So that'll be your one handicap. Yes. So I'm going to add in a couple of nerve dice. Okay. Taking me down to seven. So you need two. So I'll take something from Pi. Mm. Take something instead. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. yeah, it's okay. I've got quite a lot. I've got nine nerve, so I think it's relatively okay. high. Yeah, so I'm happy to take a couple off there for now. Um, so I need two successes. At, you said sevens. Yeah. Yep. Uh, an eight and a nine. Ooh, nice. nice. Okay. And a reroll. Uh, so so you. So you're sort of very slowly going along in the van, send the drone up and then just sort of send it out to each side, looking ahead, angling the cameras all in all the different directions that you can. And you, you spot what must be the two people you were talking to. So one woman, one man, both waiting by the side of the road, um, hard to make out on the, the scratchy picture but at least the guy at least has a, a rifle slung over his shoulder um, and they look pretty casual they look like they're just kind of relaxed just waiting you also make out this uh small town or large village um a little bit further ahead you obviously don't send the drone right in but you, you can sort of make that out and i think you even probably make out the um a couple of uh wind um, turbines um, just just a couple uh, a little bit further out which corresponds with the power plant on the map so that kind of makes sense and aside from that you don't see anything no other people no sign of any kind of trap or ambush um, you know you spend a while obviously looking around where these two people are to look, see if there's anyone else, anyone hiding, or any, any vehicles or anything in the trees. Um, nothing, no vehicles, no people. Okay. Well, I think it's safe to go forward, at least. If 12, you want to pull up maybe 50 metres away from him? We'll do, yes. No problem, boss. And, and I'll recall maybe... the drone. Maybe, maybe, maybe just let me go first. I don't think they're going to find a an old lady in a wheelchair is threatening as as you two. Did we get the uh, the guns installed on your wheelchair yet? <laughs> um, not yet. I've, I've only got two guns, and I'm kind of I want to hold on to those. <laughs> only the flamethrowers are operational at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> the job watching. we found that extra fuel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Just just swing me out of the the, the van for a sec. Yeah, and, uh, so Ghostbusters Afterlife style, you press a button and the thing kind of swings out of the side. And you have like a rolling launch. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm going to roll down uh, and I will make my way forward. I will grab the walkie-talkie and the okay. map. Yeah. But I'm keeping the pens. Of course. staying in the van. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so are, yeah, I'll go forward. Are 12 and Mono staying in the van or are you coming but just a little bit behind or...? 
Like, are you yeah, visible? I'll get, the, I'll get the drone hooked up to recharge a little bit off the, the van battery uh -huh. and um, kind of casually follow, keeping a kind of non-threatening safe distance. Okay. And uh, 12, yes. you're going same with money? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm assuming that I've got the, the van key, so I'll lock it. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'll have my sledgehammer and I'll sort of nonchalantly walk along. Yes. Um, I think pretty quite <laughs> close to Ira. Yeah, how do you look nonchalant with a sledgehammer? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. You're not swinging I, it menacingly. No. It's swinging it for kind of friendly. Casually. Casually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Casually swinging uh, away. <laughs> Perhaps kind of like a like you would like with a baseball bat or something like the arms sort of <laughs> yeah. over or something. I'm here to fix your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as soon as you sort of get reasonably close, they 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 obviously see you and they they kind of step out onto the road from where they were just leaning against a, a tree by the side of the road, and. You see, actually, they've both got rifles, but they, they keep them slung over their shoulder. They're not showing any sort of signs of hostility. Um, and the the woman steps a couple of paces ahead, and she just sort of you know, waves to you. Uh, I take it you just carry on approaching? Yeah, I'll give, like, a little little wave back and yep. keep going. Okay. Um, so once, once you get closer... She says, uh, "She says hi. Uh, I'm I'm Lia. Um, I think we we just spoke. And this is Park. And the guy sort of gives you a nod. They're they're both probably you'd you'd put them somewhere in their thirties, maybe mid to late thirties, something like that. Um, they're they're pretty sort of clean. He's got a, a well kempt beard. Um, uh, their clothes also look quite quite clean." Um, they're wearing just sort of sensible outdoor clothes. A little bit of camo. She's got like a sort of a camo jacket and he's got um, camo trousers. And yeah, they look uh, they look reasonably kind of friendly, reasonably healthy, actually quite sort of well fed and, um, you know, a nice kind of glow to them. Uh, they They both look like they're quite sort of outdoorsy kind of like tough sort of people but they're not in any way kind of grimy or you know a lot of the people you meet on the road show signs of just having been outside and having been on the road and you know uh, they don't particularly and Lyre holds out uh, a water bottle to you and this is the this has become the tradition of the the survivors is that when you meet someone you offer your water and then by accepting a drink of water, you're kind of showing your your both your willingness to share an important resource, but also your trust in the other person. And so this is like a, a, an established kind of thing amongst uh, people when they meet for the first time. So she she offers you her water. Well, I will grab the water bottle and take a swig. And I'll be like, uh, nice to meet you, uh, Liar Park. Um, my name's Ira. This is 12. Uh, don't mind her. The sledgehammer is not as damaging as you think. Uh, that back there is Mono. Um, that's his. That's his truck. So he likes to be near it. Uh, where, where's Where's your ride? You didn't come in on that tree. Oh no, well, you you you, you probably saw it on the map. Um, our Our base is just we're we're at the the village. We have a, a little community there. We're called the Eolians. Um, and we we just walk down. It's only it's only a mile or so from here. We, as as you know, I, I understand your your friend Mono's uh, reluctance to leave the van. Uh, working vehicles are a, a bit of a rare commodity these days. So we do have we do have some actually, but we you know we try not to use them where necessary. Conserve fuel and you know just keep them undercover, keep them nice and safe. Yeah, so you'd be very welcome to um, to come back and uh, and join us for for a little while if you want. Well, oh, that that, that would be great, great, and um, maybe we can repay the favor for the the water and the hospitality. Twelve here is a a pretty decent mechanic. If you need any fixing, and a mono is not too bad with the 
the, the electrics and stuff. He's the one that fixed up the radio. Uh, I don't know if you want it, it back. It's kind of in four pieces now. Um, she, she sort of takes it and she says, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, we could always use it. Um, we can, I'm sure we can probably fix it up or maybe we'll, maybe we'll ask your uh, mono, did you say? That, that's the one. Yeah, maybe. Well, anyway, but we're we're getting ahead of ourselves. I I, I would like to to hear a, a little bit more about um, how how you found Paul. Although I think probably we've heard as as much as we need to know. We have had a problem with raiders around here. You know what it's like. Um, as soon as you get something, someone else wants to take it away, and. Honestly, I pretty much thought Paul had been missing for, what is it now? And she, she looks at Park and, and Park says, got to be, got to be three months. Said, yeah, about, about three months. Three months and, and you're still trying to find him on the radio? Yeah, well, he, we just, you know, I thought, why not? We'll just give it a try. Just every day. I've just been every day, just, just in case, because, you know, cost nothing. Was he that decomposed? Asking out of character, obviously. Uh, no, he wasn't, no. Hmm. Yeah. Three months, well, well, maybe three days. Yeah, he didn't look that bad off when we saw him. Hmm. Strange. Well, anyway, let's let's head back and we can... I'm sure you could use some rest, maybe some food. Um, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself, but we're we're always looking for new members of the community. You, you'd have to speak to the, um, you know, speak speak to some other members of the community, the those in charge, and and they'd have to so make a decision. Are you, are, you, but... are you not the one in charge? No, no. Park and I are. Well, you could call us um, scouts, maybe. Um, we don't really have official roles as such, but um, Park in particular, he's uh, he, he really is an, an, an expert tracker. Um, I'm in charge of the the firearms and the the <laughs> sounds grand to call it an armory, but the the, the small stash of weapons that we've got. But um, we actually we have a sort of a, a community. We share everything and we we vote once a month on who will be in charge for the next month um at the moment it's uh laura and, and merc so they they'll be the ones that you you'll meet sounds like you're giving this new civilization thing a go well i mean what's the choice we can try and rebuild or we can live like animals we've got to do our best i reckon well we can we can we can ride back to your your compound if you want. Should we take the van, or do you want to walk? Sure, you're welcome to bring it. It'll be it'll be safer inside. And Phil, yeah, come on, let's go. Let's go take the van, and we can drive you back. Perfect. So they they jump in the back of the van, and you head just the remaining mile or so up the road. And you arrive at, in a way, it's not dissimilar to the village that you left, uh, I guess, a few days ago now. It's a bit bigger um, and more modern. So, you know, the, the, the last village was, was very much an old village that had been there for however long. This probably has, it kind of has that um, sort of zone thing that, you know, the, the centre is the old buildings and then, you know, probably dates back hundreds and hundreds of years, but then maybe I can, there's like a few Victorian buildings and the, then maybe on the outside of that, there's some, I don't know, 1960s concrete buildings. And then outside of that, some much more modern, um, you know, maybe 2000s kind of buildings. So, so it's all sorts. So it's still not massive though, um, but you know, you call it maybe a large village. And, but the similarity is that it's been, barricaded all the way around slightly more seriously um and with more care than the village you've come from so the barricades are a bit better done but still a bit of a hodgepodge of just random stuff uh, certainly they wouldn't keep out any 
sort of serious assault, but you know they're, they're going to they're provide some protection. And you you go up this this road, and, and as you get closer, the road's being quite nicely cleared. It's still a little bit potholed, but it's reasonably good going. And there's uh, there's a couple of people that they've kind of built some gates into this sort of barricade, and there's a couple of people there who, uh, as you get closer, Park kind of sticks his head out and and just kind of waves, and they give a thumbs up and open it and let you in. Uh, the, the village itself is surrounded by fields and you can see actually as soon as you sort of begin to get close uh, there is they're definitely doing some farming some of the fields have been um, planted and there's various crops you can see and you can also make out again the wind turbines in the distance it looks like there's a couple, they're a couple of miles away and once you get in um Lya says if you can just just pull over here by this wooden uh hut and then if you don't mind just waiting a bit i'll go and find laura and merc and we'll get them to come and have a chat to you and and then you'll be all, all kind of official uh, is that right yeah that's fine that's fine by us yeah um so so you do that you pull over she jumps out the van and park stays with you and she says oh, i won't be a minute probably uh, they'll be around somewhere and she scoots off um park says to you um oh sorry about the formalities it's just uh you know we can't be too careful and um we don't go as far as to enforce uh quarantine or, or anything like that um but uh, maybe in the meantime while 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 she's looking for the others uh, maybe you could just fill me in a bit on um where you've come from and uh we're, we're always we're particularly always on the lookout for um any sign of raiders or um if you've seen any uh any swarms or any kind of vermin or, or any animal activity that we should be aware of. Well, we ain't come from too far away. We we drove what well, nigh on maybe about seven hours to get here. Not very fast, but we're in a village, and I'll show them on the map. Mm. <clears throat> we're in a village just over here. We're making our way over to to this location here. We want to scope out a building just over there. Um. But that, that that village that we went through, we had to stop for a little while. Uh, so we, I, we found... I, know, I know the place is it's deserted, right? Oh, it looks like it, yeah. But there was there was still two two guys, some old guy, and uh, what well, I don't know, maybe his son, adopted son. I don't know. The weird relationship. Uh, they uh, they had a they had a I don't know what would what would you call it, Mono? You got the best look. Hmm. You mean the um the larva they were keeping in their um in their shed? Yeah, the lar- I mean, would larva be the right word? Um disgusting, hideous um insect uh, pupae. I don't know exactly the best way to describe them except um that they were horrendous and they burnt. Yeah, they're not they're no longer there, so they're not really a problem now. Yeah. Um, but they seem they seem to be I don't know, would you say they were eaten, the the villagers? Whoever came through seemed like there was a Somebody couple of bodies in there. Those old uh, that old guy and his son seemed to be uh feeding Some any travelers to these, cult, these maybe. things. Maybe. Spouting a lot of gibberish when we got there. Yeah, we we presume he went with the, the lava. Sounds like no great loss. Not particularly, but yeah, that's a, a shame. That village was barricaded almost like yours, but not quite as good as this. You think they'd have survived a little bit longer? You can never tell these days. Who knows? Disease, vermin, maybe they turned on each other. Maybe. We're lucky here. We have some good people. 
Uh, we live peacefully. But as you know, since things turn to shit, it's each man for himself. Anyway, I shouldn't talk like this. Um, like I say, we have a we have a pretty good we have a pretty good setup here. And we're it looks, always it looks pretty good from the outset. Yeah, we're we're self sufficient. Um, we get electric from the the turbines. You'll find some uh, some mod cons here that you haven't seen in a while. We've got not only running water but hot water. We've got minimal electric. We're we're attempting to rig up some electric lights. Um, we haven't quite finished that yet, but that's that's the current project. Uh, we have pretty good food. We grow some food. We don't keep any livestock. Um, we don't want to risk attracting predators. But I hunt, uh, and some of the other some of the other Aeolians also help help with me help me hunt and we so we get some some wild food some wild meat uh, and our own cereals and vegetables and, and fruits and it's life here is it's okay okay do you know why why paul was out on his his little trek he said he'd been gone for three months what was he what was he doing being gone for that long he's uh he was always, um, what would you call it? Not, not a loner exactly, but I guess he, he did his own thing. And we, we all work together here, but we don't, we don't enforce uh, sort of strict uh, rules in that sense of, of keeping people here. So of course he's, he was free to head off and, and do what he wanted. And he would sometimes go and, and spend time in the forest or, you know, he was a, uh, he was a. He just felt, I think, more at home in in the outdoors, in the wilderness. Uh, he never seemed entirely comfortable in the this lovely though it is this this community that we're building. So it's not unusual for him to be gone for a little while. And and he said he wanted to go and and scout um, some of the areas over to the west. Not not that uh, village you mentioned specifically, but. You know, we're we're always curious to see what's going on locally, uh, and to make sure there's no uh, no dangers, nothing that that we should be aware of. Mm. Uh, can I pull out the map? Yeah. Be like, yeah, it looks like he made, he kind of made his way over over this way. You don't know what why why did he mark out these places? And I'll point out some of the things on the map, mm. like the, you mentioned the hornets and what yeah. the power plant and things like that. Yeah. So yeah, he has he has a look and he says, yeah, okay. Well, so you can see we're here, and he shows you. Um, so the power plant, well, you, you must have seen that. That's uh, that's just here. That's where we get our power from. The the hornets. Um, yeah, we've had a we've had a real problem with hornets recently. These these horrible giant hornets. They're in the woods to the north of us. Um, it's it's a no go zone at the moment because what we found is on the whole they just they stay in the woods but if something disturbs them then they swarm en masse so at the moment so that's probably why he's marked it on the map so that area is we don't go in there at all it's it's a shame because it was good hunting ground i used to go there quite often but it's it's just not worth the risk at the moment um what and these hornets i mean they're like they're enormous um yeah, so that's what that is. Um, and then and then he has a look. And then apart from that, yeah, it looks like just some I guess he was just making notes for himself about whether, you know, where the water was good and and that sort of thing. Makes sense if he liked to travel on his own. Hmm. Have some safer areas and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This would be useful actually. Do you do you mind if we hang on to this? Oh no, you, you can yeah, you can keep hold of that, yeah. Appreciate that. And then at this point, um, Lion comes back, and she's got two people with her. Uh, they they almost couldn't be more difficult. There's a, an elderly lady. She's probably, I mean, at least 60s, but probably maybe 70s. Long white hair, and immediately a big smile on her face. Very kind of friendly. She's quite sort of small. Not frail, but, you know, 
I guess she she looks her age, I guess you could say. And with her is a much younger woman, a girl, you might even say. A, it could be anywhere between maybe 17, 18, possibly 19, but you, you wouldn't imagine older than 20. So that kind of age range. She's got a shaved head and she stays slightly behind and she looks quite stern. She doesn't smile uh, and she comes in and she sort of she takes a moment to to kind of check you out. So it looks at each of you in turn. And it's the older woman uh, that speaks first. And she immediately holds out her, her hand to, to shake hands. And she, and she says, um, welcome, welcome. I'm Laura. And you must be, uh, and she looks at Ira first. She says, well, you must be Ira. Yes, ma'am, I'm Ira, and I'll put out my hand. Shake hand, yeah. Um, and I suppose uh, this must be mono and 12, is it? Yes, that's right. Pleasure to meet you. And you. You're, you're very welcome here. And uh, the younger girl is, is, again, just kind of standing there, just, just watching you. Um, and, and Laura, the old lady, she says... Uh, she says, and this is this is Merck. Um, she says we are uh, we are the community leaders for at least for this uh, time period. We we don't have permanent leaders here. We we change our roles, but for now, that has been our allotted task, if you like. Um, you're very welcome here. And I'm sure Lyra and, and Park have already given you the the basics. Um, so long as you believe yourselves to be disease free, uh, you're very welcome to to join us here. And in our community, we we share everything, and that includes sharing with newcomers. We just ask that you also contribute what, whatever you can in, in whatever way you can uh, depending on your skills and abilities um, and in return if you make yourself uh, a, a member of the community we will treat you as such and you're very welcome to share with us in our, in our, in our food and the other um, trappings dare I say of, of civilization that we that we have here does that sound fair to you well, that, that sounds remarkably fair. Uh, I think we're happy to to contribute where we can. Uh, I know we've, we we can potentially fix some stuff, help with some maintenance, that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, I can even help and go out go out hunting if you if you don't mind me taking the wide path. Uh, I mean, may, maybe we can just help in day to day tasks. But I don't think and we're that, going to be staying here long term, um, just so you're aware. We are traveling through. Understood. Understood. Um, well, that sounds that sounds great. And, and some help with the hunting would, would really be wonderful. Um, fresh meat is always uh, a treat. Now, there are just uh, three, well, actually, at the moment, four rules. And... I must ask that you follow the rules. And this is the one thing that we really do insist on. And this is not just for you. This is for all of us. And the rules are don't steal, don't lie, don't kill. And until further notice, don't go into the forest. Now, you may think this is... Uh, unnecessary but i would ask you each to just repeat those back to me and acknowledge that you're willing to stick to those rules and then i will take you on your word and you will be welcome to uh, have free reign of our our small community oh, oh i've got no problem with that do you do you two have any problems with that uh no problem at all well as an engineer, I have only one question, which is, 
Why not the forest? We know what's there. But I think Park just said it's full of hornets. Uh, but that's our choice, as long as we, you know. I'm, I'm, well, Mono, you don't want to go bringing, I'm, like, stirring the hornet's nest and bringing them back to the, the this village, though. So. Don't go to the hornet's nest, but uh, there are other places in the forest. And if we're going to hunt and contribute, then it seems fair we can go to the place where the food is. She she says you you're very welcome, of course, to um to to hunt. And as I say, uh, help with the hunting would be would be wonderful. Um, but the area to the north, where the the forest is thick, hmm. that is where the hornets are. Uh, there are not just one nest, but but many. And when they're disturbed, they swarm out of the nest unpredictably. And we oh, are not sorry. so far away. So the um, the concern is not so much the forest, but um, understanding the territory and uh, probably not kicking the nest. I understand. Exactly. I can get on board with exactly. this. I needed to know why. It was not challenging. I understand. It's it's a it's a good question. And this is a this is a new rule. The the hornets have not been a problem for all that long. And we hope to understand them and, and to work out the best way to deal with them. But for now, uh, the risk of disturbing them is is too great. Hmm. Then for now, I accept. Then yeah, I think we're all on board. Uh, we, we won't steal, we won't lie, we won't kill, we won't go into that forest. What she said. <laughs> Agreed. No stealing, lying, killing, and no forest. I think that might be a good point to leave it for this evening. So, uh, yeah, let us know what you thought of, of that session. Berman 2047, the... Uh, Scenario is called the Eolians from the Survival Kit. Tune in next Wednesday for the next thrilling instalment. Until then, uh, how can people find you, Neil? Uh, people can find me by looking at paladinroleplaying.com or coming yeah. on to Discord. And uh, I'm Paladin Neil on Discord. Hmm. And uh, Chris, Johnny, about your good selves. Yep, same for me. You can find me on the Discord. I'm Chris Daffer on Discord if you want to chat. Yep, same for me. I'm on the Discord. Hope you had a great time. Please let us know in the comments. Please like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. This has been Wasteland Wednesdays. My name is Phil. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, until next time, I hope that your dice rolls are way better than mine. Although, actually, today they weren't too bad, were they? Not too bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> take care, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. Bye.